So Hugging Face is, is this very large community of people building AI. So it's normal. Yeah. If you're not an AI builder, it's kind of normal. You don't know about it. If you're someone who is building AI, uh, you probably like you probably in this community. We've just passed 10 million AI builder, which is quite crazy because. Two years ago, right, nobody was building AI things anyway. And uh, the specificity of this community, I would say, is it's also around open source. Open source is this idea that we can, we can share knowledge, we can share the code, and it's actually increase and catalyze the whole field and the whole development in the field. And there's a fun story why it's called Hugging Face, right? Yeah, we started as a game company, and yeah. we totally pivoted five years ago, uh, open sourcing uh, part of our, of our code to, to train early AI models. Mm. Um, and this gets so much traction that we decided that we wanted to build a platform around this. Mm. So, Thomas, the, this notion of open source, open weight models versus these closed models. Uh, for, for open source, wh where are you seeing the sort of pros right now? Why are you bullish on, the, on these, these kind of models? A lot of them. I, th I think what we maybe don't see always when we follow AI, maybe a little bit externally, is that you know, there is these very big models everyone is talking about, but there is a very long tail of application with models of all, cap all capabilities, all powerness. Some models can run on your phone, some models can run on your laptop. And I think for all these long tails, it's extremely interesting to have them open source. You can host them yourself, so you don't have any data privacy issue. You can tweak them, you can adapt them to your own use case. If you're doing medical AI, for instance, you want to adapt them to your, to your field. Yeah. So you can do all these type of things with open source models that are really hard to do with closed source model. And the last point is uh, resiliency. When you rely on a closed source model, you have one person providing you basically the core brick of your technology. If this cloud stopped working, like we had a couple of months ago cloud strike where all the playing was grounded because one company you know, had a bug. If we have one day a bug in uh, OpenAI API, basically everyone goes down. With open source, you're free to basically have a lot of resiliency, put your models wherever you want in the world. And, and Thomas, do we need to start? I was speaking to uh, the Mistral AI CEO yesterday, and he said we need to start, stop thinking about models and start thinking about AI systems, the real sort of applications that are being built on top. And I've been told by multiple people, anyways, models are just going to be commoditized anyway. Uh, so so what, is it now time to start thinking of, of the world beyond models and, and the totally. real applications? What, yeah, what should totally. we be thinking about here? I think it's one of the reasons big trend this year is AI agents, for instance, which is not only uh, a model, right, but it's a model coupled with a system that can call tools, connect to your database. I think people are, are moving from, you know, this craziness around the model, mm. understanding that thanks to open source, and Mistral has been a super strong uh, proponent of open source, a lot of these models are just going to be free and freely available. Mm. And so the next step is to build application and I remember as Slash we were talking and I was telling you, yeah. we, we're kind of moving from, build, in the internet revolution, we're moving from building websites as the main business to actually building an internet native company. Mm. So the Airbnb of AI, the Stripes of AI, they start to be built. And they're not about the model, they're about the system and how you make the model useful for tasks, for real tasks, right? Where you need to integrate that in the life of people. Yeah. We are there any sort of big challenges you see in 2025 to uh, the broader development of AI applications? Is it, is it infrastructure, compute power, money? Are there, are there any challenges you see uh, this year ahead? A lot of this is education, to be honest. Okay. Getting more people, a bigger community that know how to build AI. Mm. Getting a lot of people, and I think open source is great for that because it's very easy to try a model, it's very easy to adapt them, you can actually understand the tech. Yeah. Getting more people to understand the tech so they can build application. You feel like, you know, it's, it's like go west, young man. It's like, there's so many things we can build right now. Yeah. We just need people to actually do that. Yeah. Uh, on the infrastructure side of the equation, uh, Vast our previous guest here, there was a very big announcement overnight from the Trump administration, $500 billion of AI infrastructure. Yeah. Um, what do you make of that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's what I was telling you, really. I, I think there will be some of these very large, very costly AI models, yeah. right? But there is this long tails of model of all size that can run everywhere and it can actually mm. do a lot of things, right? What I say often is, in your business use case, you don't always need a model that can be a field medalist. You, you don't always need your models to solve frontier yeah. math problem, right? A lot of business use cases are actually pretty low, I would say, in the IQ, STEAM level. Yeah. We can already build these. So we'll have maybe scientific discoveries out of this very large model. Yeah. But business use case, you don't need 
scientific discovery yeah. for every business. Okay. 